Hey guys, it's Roderick. I'm here with X-Force 46. So right before I stepped on camera, I was about to go in, let have, you know, really talk about like how disappointing these Fall of X books were, blah, blah, blah. But what I decided to do is I'm just going to wait, right? I'm going to wait until all the books I'm reviewing wrap up and then do kind of like a Fall of X report card sometime at the end of December. I think that's when all the um, Fall of X books will be ending. So that's Immortal X-Men, Uncanny Avengers, Astonishing Iceman, X-Force, Dark X-Men. And that way I'll be able to look at the whole topography of all the books and be able to kind of really see that because every week is kind of like the same thing I'm talking about, but I want to give the books some time to really play out because they really may surprise me. I'm just not liking some of the choices that's going on, but I'm going to leave some room for surprises. So look for that Fall of X report card at the end of December. So welcome to my channel. This is where we review television shows, films, comic books, all with a little key key with the eye towards screenwriting, acting, directing. So welcome. Let's get into X-Force 46. So here we go. So this is kind of like the wrap up of this kind of storyline, right? Because now... As recall, Mikhail has been shot by Zheng Wei, who's been under the control of the author, and he's bleeding, and he's, like, making his pitch to Colossus, right? Like, you should join me, we're brothers, Krakoa's gone, all the mutants are dead, you know, whatever. And Colossus is like, hail to the na 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 nah, you are used me, I've hurt people I've cared about, how could you do this? So we go back to Doctor Strange's house, and Doctor Strange has found a way to, to create a portal from the little ring of kind of like the dimensional thing that uh, Mikhail has for them to kind of go into um, the void, we'll call it the void, where Mikhail and Colossus are to try to rescue everyone else. So Doctor Strange creates a portal, Sage and Domino go into that portal, and they find Kid Omega, who's being tortured with like jumper pliers, and they kill that person. Then they find Wolverine, who's fighting nesting Russian doll men, I guess, which is kind of leftover tech, um, technology from the Peacock guy, right? So then we get back, and Mikhail and Colossus are fighting. Mikhail kind of like heals himself, and I mean, Mikhail's kind of like, well, you're the one who's loved. You know, you know, I should have everything you have, and I'm on kind of like. Is being a mutant not that that coveted spot, right? Everybody hates the mutants. Everybody hates the X Men. I don't know what television show that Mikel is watching, but the mutants are not like the Avengers or Spider Man or even Elektra, right? Like everybody hates the mutants. So the fact is, is that Mikel is once again just bitter because he feels like Colossus has gotten something that really that he should have had, and the Mikel Colossus is kind of like you could have had this. It's, you know, you could have been in the school. You could have gone through all this stuff, too. So, anyway, the author and Jung Wei are there. And she's like, how do I get out of this, right? So, before they could do that, Deadpool shows up. Because now he's shown up at Doctor Strange's. Because, remember, they called him. And he was like, I'm too busy. I'm, like, flossing with the Avengers or whatever like that. But I guess he showed up to Doctor Strange's. Doctor Strange puts him through the portal. He's helping, like, Domino all the while talking about Doctor Strange's butt. Which I thought was, like, a really cute thing to do, right? And now Macau has like Colossus on the ropes. So we go back to their fight. He heals himself. And then all of a sudden Colossus rips out Mikhail's heart, right? Because Colossus realizes that the only way he can stop his brother is to like kill him, right? So I was like, okay, right? So then they come through the portal and the now Colossus is in big trouble. He's like, whatever you all decide to do to me, you could do to me. And we get a data page from the author that pretty much says is that they return Junway back to Orcus, they wipe her mind, and that's kind of it, right? Like, so, I mean, that was X-Force. So looking at this issue itself solely, I am so glad they buttoned up this Macau russian thing. I thought that this storyline dragged on way too long. The payoffs were not worth it. We still have, like, where's the Cerebro Sword? Right? Because you remember when this story first started, Mikhail had stolen the Cerebro Sword. Now, the Cerebro Sword, if you go back to like the first few issues of X Force, when the assassination attempt was made on Professor Xavier, they damaged Cerebro. Magneto created a sword out of the fragments of Cerebro, right? Which still contains all the memories and psychic. Um, residue of all the mutants or whatever like that, right? So the problem is when he stole the sword, I was like, well, what do you can't do with it? You can't do anything with the Cerebro sword unless you have 
a Jean Grey, an Emma Frost, a Kid Omega, a Hope to actually kind of extract what's in there, right? But he had the Cerebral Sword. And the Cerebral Sword is like on the cover of this issue, but we don't know what the Cerebral Sword is. So maybe we'll find that out in like issue number 47. I'm now, I want to say, I will give it to issue 47. The kind of, because that, again, like I said, I'm going to, you know, see how the books are. I'm not making any promises with X-Force after December, just because this book has just kind of dropped off from where it was. I will say, looking at the X-Force issue in and of itself outside of Fall of X, it has just steadily declined because they hinged the entire book on Wolverine. But then when Wolverine had other things to do when he left the team, the whole narrative of the team fell apart, right? If you think about when X-Force first started, it was Wolverine, it was Jean Grey, it was Beast, it was Sage, it was Domino. We have that whole arc of Domino being kidnapped, them cutting off her skin, using her skin to kind of parachute into Krakoa and try to kill Professor X, and X-Force really being kind of like this black ops CIA kind of faction of you know, for Krakoa. And it was really great because then you had the X-Men. So you kind of had X-Force kind of juxtaposed to the X-Men with like the X-Men being the public face of Krakoa. And then you had X-Force. But the problem is, is that the, the you got kind of lost once you started pulling characters. I think Jean Grey should have never left X-Force. I recognize that they needed her to go over and like sell X-Men books. But I think that her place in X-Force would have been far more useful and far more interesting as a team. Um, Cause Kid Omega just, he just didn't bring the help that we needed, right? Like, yeah, fine, Gene leaves, you still have Kid Omega, you have an Omega level, level, level telepath still on it, but Kid Omega just still doesn't bring the same help that Gene does, very few characters actually do, but the team just didn't really gel right. Like, you, then you brought in, you know, Omega Red, and then you brought in Deadpool. And I feel it, was, it, it still was enjoyable, but I feel like they lynched the entire, they kind of bound the entire book with it being a Wolverine-centric book. And then when Beast pulled his Wolverine shit and Wolverine was gone, you really didn't have anything left, right? And we'll get, what's that payout going to be, right? Okay, I see that you've turned Beast into an evil asshole, but like... What is that payout going to be? How is that going to reconcile itself? Uh, if it's already reconciled, because I ain't been following. So, because I'm, I'm not picking up the Wolverine book to see how that whole beast things follow. So, you all can drop down in the comments and let me know. I made Wikipedia tonight and actually see how, like, kind of how that went. But I don't know. Like, the book started off with so much promise, and I really like Benjamin Percy's writing. Like, and I hate kind of getting on here, kind of like harshly critiquing or or bashing my other artist's choice because as, you know, if you watch my other videos, I'm an artist. And so I always like to have that type, same type of respect, but at like $4.99, $3.99 a week, you don't have that long enough runway to kind of like say, oh, well, this is going to pay off, right? Like, so I just, I mean, if, if you liked it, I like, I won't say I dislike the book. It's just that I think if I had started reading the book, um, in the middle or whatever, my expectations will probably will be a lot lower. But since I started reading this book right when it came out, issue one, and seeing all the promise ahead, it just kind of has like decayed, you know, since this, since the inception. But I think that happens with every comic book though, right? So, and also recognizing that as Krakoa went from, you know, House of X, Powers of X, Rise of X, Destiny of X, now we're in the fall of X, that it would be illogical or unreasonable to think that X-Force would not change along with the different phases of the Grakoan age. So that being the case, let me know, let me know what you thought of um, X-Force 46. I will be around for X-Force 47. I'll do my fall of X report card at the end of the month. I hope you guys are having a great Thanksgiving Day holiday. And don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.